So we're going to continue with our topic. The topic is uh, understanding disabilities of people and being considerate of them. And also giving people opportunities. Just because somebody has a disability, we shouldn't use that to make them stay back in life. So if we look at the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he picked his Mu'addin, is the person who would give azan. There was two of them, and one of them was blind. And one of them was blind. And there was also sometimes a chance he could make a mistake even because to give the azan you have to be very precise with the movement of the sun. When the sun rises and when the fajr time kicks in, it's a very tricky moment. So he would give the tahajjud azan and Bilal radiallahu anhu would give the fajr azan. So there was a tahajjud azan in the time of sahaba radiallahu anhu. So he was a blind sahabi and he was allowed to do that. And so that would show that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wanted people with disabilities to continue in the deen and give them opportunities. So likewise, when we have anybody that has complications, we should be kind with them, merciful with them. They might cause a disturbance, they might cause inconvenience, but they're also inspiration. I know a brother who comes to our masjid, and you might have seen him. He is here on the windiest days. Just two days ago, it was very windy, and he was here for Isha Salat. And the other day he was here for Fajr Salat and it was so windy. And I'm thinking, how does he make it here? And I've seen him walking to the masjid with a stick and he's feeling his way. He comes to the parking lot, his knees are hitting the, the cars when he's trying to squeeze through the cars that are parked. He has a hard time, he's touching the doors. He's hitting the wrong things with his hands and stick and he finally gets inside the masjid and I am shocked and I shake just seeing him because of how much mercy must be coming down on him when he cannot even see and he's still coming to the masjid. And I feel so guilty if I don't come to the masjid because I know he's coming to the masjid. So when we look at the, our scholars of the past, there were scholars who had disabilities in learning. Some of them were blind, some of them were deaf, but they continued learning deen and taking deen forward. So if we have anybody in our family or in our community who needs help, then we should uh, afford them that. Likewise, when we make our Islamic centers, our masajid, we should make them friendly for anybody with disabilities to be able to uh, get into the masjid. If the masjid is made in a way where a person with disabilities or uh, weaknesses in his body is not able to get in, we're basically shunning them away. If you look at a public school, you can see the friendliness just by the way you come in. You go to a school, it looks welcoming. There's bigger hallways, there's ramps to go up, the stairs are wide, the doors are wide. Everything is so comfortable looking. So we should take from that. Our Islamic heritage, is of that nature where it brings ease. Although many times our masajid, because they're tinier properties, smaller properties, so they look very restricted. But we should try our best to make our masajid, our centers, our classes more accessible to anybody with disabilities, whether it be they're not able to hear, they're not able to see, all these disabilities that a person could have, we should make it easy for them. And uh, as I said in the beginning, do not see it as a wrath of Allah or the ghadab of Allah. Allah is not like them, so they have these disabilities. It's not like that. As I mentioned the hadith in the beginning, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made somebody, tested them with their eyes. The hadith mentions, if I take away someone's eyes and he stays patient, I give him jannah for it. So, let's try our best to appreciate people that have disabilities respect them, do not look down on them, and do not feel pity for them. When we feel too much pity for them, they feel bad about themselves. So we shouldn't make people feel pity. We should encourage them that inshallah you'll be fine. And they, that's how they like to be given confidence. They don't like to be shown as if they're helpless. Because it's very interesting, many of you will be able to relate to this. If somebody has a slight disability and maybe sight, their, their hearing is extra precise. And that's how Allah has compensated many people. They might have weakness in one faculty, but they're many times, many fold more sharper than the rest people in other faculties. So it's a, it's a give and take and the blessings of Allah are infinite. So we should try our best to respect people with disabilities, make life easier for them, and never ever make fun of them outwardly or in our minds, look down upon them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the mun'im, He's the ni'mad giver, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely dislikes it when we joke around with Allah's ni'mads.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, did not like it when the kuffar would say, how come Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa became a Nabi? He's not from a rich family or a rich town. So they had an objection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the ayat and said, Are you people describe are you people distributing Allah's ni'mats? Are you the distributors? Are you dividing Allah's ni'mat or are we deciding it? We are deciding it, we are gonna give ni'mas to different people, different amounts. You have no right to object. So if Allah has given somebody eyesight, Allah has taken away somebody's eyesight, even in the deepest of our minds, it should never cross, am I better than this person? It should never cross like that. It should be always know Allah is testing me with giving me eyes and Allah is testing him by taking away his eyesight. That way we can stay humble forever. Allah give us